So what do weight gain, mood, cognitive function, inflammation, insulin sensitivity, immune system function, sleep, stress, and again, weight gain all have in common? Well, that's gonna be our microbiome. Maybe, just maybe, we should pay a little bit more attention to this. Hey everyone, Timbermaster here, and in this video, we're gonna be going over our gut microbiome and weight loss. One of the most important things we absolutely need to consider when it comes to losing weight, and unfortunately, if we're also experiencing some unexpected weight gain. All right, so what are we gonna be talking about in this one? Well, we're gonna be going over what our microbiome is, how our microbiome can affect our weight, and how to make improvements to our microbiome so we can set ourselves up for success when it comes to short and long-term weight loss. But before we talk about how our microbiome and weight loss are connected, let's go over what it actually is. Now, the human gut is often referred to as the second brain and maybe even the third brain for men. But when we're born, our guts are actually relatively sterile and as we grow up, we start to develop a vast collection of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. And the trillions and trillions of little microbes that inhabit our gut can actually dictate quite a few things in our bodies. So one of the absolute most important things to recognize here is that our body is a system of systems. Everything is precisely connected. So if one thing in our body experiences dysfunction, like for instance, our microbiome, that's 100% going to affect other systems in our body. Now our microbiome can positively or negatively impact weight, but there's also quite a few other things that our microbiome can do as well. Number one, our microbiome can affect our immune system. It's actually pretty commonly understood that about 70% of our immune system is in our gut. Number two, our microbiome also influences neurotransmitters like serotonin. So this means that your gut affects your brain and the gut-brain axis is actually a very real thing. Number three, our microbiome can affect our sleep and stress reactivity. So this means it can actually respond negatively to high stress situations and poor quality sleep. Number four, our microbiome can influence memory, mood, and cognition. Ever had brain fog? What about being irritable after eating? Yep, that's gonna be your microbiome. And number five, our microbiome can contribute to leaky gut and systemic inflammation. So by eating the wrong foods, we can actually damage our intestinal lining, which can lead to a whole host of other issues. But when it comes to weight gain and weight loss though, how do we know that our gut flora is gonna be one of the main influencers? Well, did you know that the microbiome of an overweight or obese person is gonna be different when compared to someone who is lean? Yes, a person's microbiome can actually dictate their weight. And fortunately for a lot of people out there, a positive change in their microbiome means that it's really just gonna increase the likelihood that they're going to be able to lose weight. Now, I would say that the human race is incredibly innovative. We've been able to put people on the moon and in outer space, most of us actually have have these little tiny supercomputers that fit in the palms of our hands and now we can actually take poop from a lean person with a healthy microbiome and transplant that poop into an overweight person with an unhealthy microbiome and that poop transplant can actually help that overweight person lose weight yes poop swapping can lead to weight loss. Pretty crazy, right? Well, let's be real here. Most of us are not gonna be getting a fecal transplant anytime soon. So why don't we instead just take a look at two really important types of bacteria? Now, from a very broad perspective, there are two types of overarching bacteria that most other bacteria kind of fall into, and those are called Bacteroidetes and Firmicutes. And these two types of bacteria contain most of the normal flora that inhabit our gut. And one of the most important things with Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes is their ratio. Now, there's been quite a bit of research that's been done on the Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio, since it can actually be a pretty good predictor of obesity or being overweight. So having a high Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio or 
when we have too many Firmicutes compared to Bacteroidetes is when we actually see this issue of weight gain specifically with fat deposition. And this high Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio can also contribute to other issues like insulin resistance and inflammation, which are also both known to lead to weight gain as well. Now, before we jump into how we can improve our microbiome for weight loss, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. It lets me know if this content is good enough for you and helps out with the YouTube algorithm as well. So here comes the big question. How can we improve our microbiome to help us lose some weight? Okay, so in order for us to be successful with weight loss, let's do some quick thinking. So most of us aren't going to be getting a fecal transplant, so that's kind of out. And when it comes to weight loss, most of us are also probably going to be seeing varying degrees of success with calorie restriction. And in reality, we kind of know it doesn't really work terribly well long term. So maybe what we need to do is think about our gut, address our nutrition, which will in turn affect our microbiome, neurotransmitters and hormones. And as a result of making these positive improvements to our gut, we lose weight and see long term success. Now I'm going to give five tips to help tackle everything when it comes to gut slash microbiome health so we can lose weight weight the right way. Number one, reduce refined carbohydrates, grains, sugar, and alcohol consumption. It's actually pretty widely known that these types of food provide nourishment for those microbes that completely sabotage our weight loss efforts. And all of these types of foods also jack up our insulin as well, which is not going to help with weight loss. Number two, we got to eat organic veggies, particularly dark leafy greens. Now this is going to be incredibly important because veggies contain fiber and polyphenols. And both of these things are super important for feeding our healthy gut bacteria. And when it comes to eating organic, this is really important because glyphosate, a widely used herbicide has actually been shown to create create quite a bit of dysfunction within our microbiome. Number three, stop consuming all artificial sweeteners because, well, artificial sweeteners have been widely known to cause major issues with the microbiome and are actually one of the main reasons why diet sodas do not help with weight loss. Number four, try fasting and intermittent fasting. Why? Well, because fasting and intermittent fasting can actually provoke remodeling of the microbiome. And lastly, number five, a supplement with L-glutamine. So one study actually found an improvement in the Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio when they gave participants 30 grams of L-glutamine per day to overweight individuals for 14 days. So this could definitely be something to consider. Also, another beneficial thing about glutamine is that it's been known to help heal intestinal wall lining, and it can actually help with cravings as well. So if you're interested in taking glutamine as a supplement, I've left an Amazon affiliate link in the description down below. Check it out. It's definitely something to consider. So overall, I think the thing to remember here is that everything starts with your gut. If you take care of your digestive system, good things will happen. And if you don't though, maybe some not so good things are gonna happen. However, if you do take action with some of the previous recommendations, the likelihood of seeing some good positive results with weight loss is gonna be pretty encouraging. Now, if you like this video and you wanna learn more about losing weight while getting healthy, then please subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to make a video on. I'm always looking to get feedback and suggestions. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about what I eat to stay lean and to stay full for long periods of time while following a diet called the PE diet, check out the video right here. All right, well, I guess that's it for me. Thanks so much for checking out the video and I will see you soon.